Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about fuzzy hashing, and specifically the tool SSDeep. So you might be thinking, what is fuzzy hashing? Well, uh, let's first take a look at kind of traditional or regular hashing um, using uh, MD5SUM. So MD5SUM creates MD5 hashes on, on OS X, um, just MD5. Uh, on Windows, there's lots of different tools that can um, create MD5 hashes. And right now I have several uh, text files inside this folder. So if I run MD5 sum against all of the text files, I get uh, this um, string, this hexadecimal string. And these, um, uh, each of these is called a hash value, okay? So these are MD5 hashes. And uh, what we can do with these, basically MD5 sum is reading in uh, the data from each of those text files the, at, at, the, at the binary level um, and feeding that into the MD5 uh, hashing algorithm. So uh, the idea of a hash is that for all of the data that comes in, um, the hash basically takes that data and produces a unique output. Okay, So for basically any data that's exactly the same as whatever is in this 10 period file, this email, um, if we had another email that was exactly the same, we would get exactly the same hash value output. Now, don't think about the text. Think about the underlying data um, that's, that's in there. So comparing it at the bit level, um, if we have two files that are exactly the same at the binary level, we should get the same hash output. Okay. So in this case, if we look at it, uh, all of these different hashes, we can do a quick kind of check, and we see that none of these hashes um, are the same. So none of the data is exactly the same. Okay. Now, yeah, these types of hashes are very good for lots of different things in digital forensics. First off, it's very fast. Um, so we can, if we know the hash value of a known good or a known bad file, we can use that hash value to very quickly search through uh, a disk or a bunch of files and see if any files match the known hash value. If they do, um, then we can either filter them out or focus on them uh, depending on what type of uh, file it is or what we want to do with it. Okay. Now the problem here is that um, some of these files are very, very similar to each other, right? But the hash value doesn't care about similarity. It cares about uh, exactness. Okay. So um, sometimes it's, it's interesting to find files that are similar. So for example, if um, someone was uh, modifying documents or um, let's say if they took um, uh, intellectual property and they kind of changed it a little bit, but um, they actually stole the original intellectual property and we wanted to find the original or even the, the modified version, uh, we want to know about similarities, not exact matches in some cases. Um, let me remove this. So um, what I'm going to do here, I have four different text files and I'm going to focus on uh, email 26. So I'll just go in here and show you what it is. Email 26, um, we can see here this is the email header. Um, these emails are actually from the Enron test data set. Uh, we have the email header and then we have the uh, body of the email. Um, if we look at uh, email 17, uh, same thing, or well, close to the same thing, we have the email header. Um, and then we have the body of the text and we can see that the text is very different. So if you look, this is mul several paragraphs. This is basically just one paragraph um, with different people in the email, things like that. Okay. So between 17 and 26, there's not really much similarity. Okay. But imagine that I took email 26 and I modified it slightly. Well, it looks like pretty much the same email. Um, except we can we can kind of see jumping back and forward probably what changed, but there is a slight modification and I made a slight modification to it. So let's just pretend um, that I want to change the contents of this email, but still make it look like the original email. Okay, um, so we have the original and we have the modified versions and we have two other emails that are basically not related to this. Okay, now. Out of all of these, I want to know which ones are similar and how similar are they? Well, we can use something called fuzzy hashing and the tool that we're talking about is SSDeep um, and I'll put a link uh, below with uh, in, a link below to SSDeep. 
Um, so SSD does what we call fuzzy hashing. Now, if we do SSD star, then it should hash all of the files in this directory. Um, and we can see that the hashes are quite a bit different. So let me do M MD5 sum again. So uh, MD5 sum gives me a, a hexadecimal value, uh, relatively short. Um, and then for uh, SSD, we get this type of hash value. So this is the hash for SSD. And what we can do with this is instead of comparing to see if this number and this number are exactly the same, uh, we can basically use this um, to compare with other fi other uh, other fuzzy hashes to see how similar they actually are. Okay, so we're using the the hash values to see how similar uh, two different files are. Okay, so what I can do here is do ss deep, and then I want to hash everything and save it to um, let's call it fuzzy.ssd. And this is where I'm going to save all of the hashes to. So um, I'm running ss deep, getting all the hash values, and then saving uh, the output to uh, fuzzy ssd. And I'm going to suppress any. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll just do that. Okay, then it says, did not uh, process files large enough to produce meaningful results. Um, sometimes this can, uh, basically you have to have quite a bit of data uh, to do reliable fuzzy hashing. In this case, the emails, it should work. Uh, but if your files are too small, you might have some problems. Okay, so now I have, uh, if we look inside the hash um, hash file that I just created, we see um, the SSD header, we see uh, the S, uh, fuzzy hashes for the four different text files that I have in the same directory. Okay. Now if I look, I want to find out if any of these files actually match um, or are somehow related. So I can do ssdeep-m and then feed it my fuzzy hashes that I've just, uh, the fuzzy hash database I've just created. Um, I want to hash or compare to all of the files in the directory and I'm going to um, suppress any error messages here. Okay, so hit enter. Now we have a couple uh, interesting matches here. So you notice um, here demo text 10 period matches demo text 10 period 100%. Well, we would expect that. Um, but 10 is not matching anything else. Okay, so whenever we look, 10 doesn't match anything else. It's not similar in any way. Uh, 17, same thing. 17 doesn't match um, basically in any other way. And then we have 26. So 26 matches 26, 100%. We expect that. Uh, 26 matches 26 mod, 99%. Okay, so something in that file changed um, and not very much. So the match is very high, very good match here. Um, same 26 mod matches uh, 26 99 percent okay that's just the reverse and 26 mod matches 26 mod 100 percent okay if I want to see all of the matches all of the comparisons that are done I can do dash a and it will show me zero percent matches so uh, in this case 17 matches 10 zero percent well we we expect that the only thing similar in between 10 and 17 uh, if we look at it, uh, so 17 has a bunch of text, it has this header, the header ha is uh, to a specific person. If we look at, uh, yeah, even the header is quite different. So we have some things that are kind of similar in the header, but then again, the two is very different. So we have uh, two, just one person, we have CC, we have a subject, here we have two, we do have a subject, but it's also different. So the similarity between uh, these would be very, very, very low. And in this case, it's counting as zero just because there's so much text that's different uh, above, basically. Um, so these two files are considered not similar at all um, because even the message ID, even if this um, uh, tag is basically the same, uh, the ID or the value is gonna be different as well, okay? Yeah. So these two are considered completely different files, so they match at a zero. Where was it? I think, it was, yeah, here. Okay, so 10 matches 10, 100%, 10 matches 17, 0, 10 matches 26, 0, and that's what we expect. 10 shouldn't match anything else because it's an email and it's it's quite different than any other email. Um, let's see, 17, basically the same thing, 26, uh, basically the same thing, except for 26 mod where it matches a lot. Now, 
Fuzzy hashing works really, really well against text files or non-compressed file types, basically, but uh, essentially text files. If you're trying to look for uh, similarities, for example, if you have a, um, uh, a part of an email, let's go back. If I was looking for, for example, some of this text inside the email, um, well, I could just do uh, searches through the email, but if I was looking for, for example, entire paragraphs or something like that, um, you could figure out which ones might contain that paragraph depending on how you were searching. But this basically just says, you know, if there is a modification uh, between two files, uh, we can now identify which files are probably going to be modified. Okay. Now, just to give you another example, um, let's go out of text. So it works really well for text. Let's go out. It doesn't work so well for images. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In the images folder, I've set up a couple examples here. Um, I have this cat, and this is the original photo. It's a JPEG image. Uh, it's called Kitty JPEG 1. And then I also have uh, Kitty JPEG 2, which has been modified slightly, so a bit of a swirly face here. Um, Kitty JPEG 2 has been uh, edited using a, um, uh, an image editing program. Okay, saved as Kitty JPEG 2. And then I also have Kitty PNG 1. And it's basically an exact copy of uh, Kitty JPEG 1, just saved as a PNG uh, with compression. Uh, Kitty PNG 2, uh, same thing, except with a swirl, uh, saved with compression. Uh, PNG 3, uh, I added a, a black box to, uh, to the image, a small black box. Um, yeah, saved as PNG with compression. Uh, Kitty PNG 4, just added an extra eyeball. Um, yeah, to the image also saved as a JPEG with compression. Kitty J, uh, Kitty PNG five, um, basically no edits saved without compression and Kitty PNG six, the swirl again saved without compression. Okay. So a couple different images here and we're trying to look to see, um, can we detect, uh, different changes in the images? Now remember SS deep is not doing, um, uh, uh, image, um, oh, it's not doing computer vision, right? We are not extracting features from the image and analyzing those features or the similarity between features in the picture. We are analyzing the images at a binary level. Okay, so what are some, uh, I guess, hypotheses we can already make about the images at the binary level? Well, um, I'm guessing uh, that these JPEGs are not going to match. Why? Well, because the compression um, in, uh, uh, in the JPEG format, basically those two images at the binary level will, will be completely different. Um, PNGs, I think, will be a little bit similar, and uh, PNGs with no compression, I think, will be very similar. Okay, so um, yeah, it it really has to do with the file formats, JPEGs. I don't think we'll be able to get a similarity match at the binary level. Uh, PNGs, I think we will. Okay, so that's my hypothesis here. So uh, just like before with the text, remember we're doing it this. At the, yeah, okay. So binary level, we're not doing computer vision here. That's a different a different thing. Um, so we can do SS deep uh, star, and then I'm gonna suppress the text. Dash S. Okay. So here's all of the hashes we have for each of the files. So what we need to do now is uh, create the hashes for all of the values. I'm going to suppress the errors um, and uh, save save everything to fuzzy.ssd. Um, so we're going to take all the hashes, save them to fuzzy ssd, and then uh, if we cat fuzzy. And we can see all of the hash values. Now we want to compare with all of the files that are currently in here and see if any of these images are actually similar. So we can do SS deep and then feed it the file dash M fuzzy SSD. And then I want to compare with all of the, um, uh, all of the files in the directory and I want to suppress all of the errors. Okay. So hit enter. Now we can see a few things, right? So just like uh, with the text files, we have JPEG one matches JPEG one. Okay, we expected that, but we don't see JPEG one anywhere else. So JPEG one is, it looks like it's not matching anything else. Okay, and this was the original file. Remember, this is the file that everything else was built off of. 
Uh, JPEG 2, basically the same thing. It matches JPEG 2, but we don't see it anywhere else. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, it looks like my my JPEG hypothesis is working out. The JPEGs uh, don't match each other because they were modified, um, and most likely, well, because of the compression um, in JPEG, it looks like that the files don't match the binary level because they basically get um, recompressed. Uh, right, so PNG1 is basically a direct copy of JPEG1, and it matches PNG1. Now, PNG1 also matches PNG2 41%. So let's look at that real quick. So we have PNG1, which is the cat uh, with uh, basically no modifications. PNG2, the cat with a blurry face. Okay, so the only thing we did is on this layer, um, blurred out and then saved, right? So they both have the same compression level. Um, the only thing that basically changed was the blurry space, right? And apparently this space is enough with the compression that's used um, to be able to match up to 41%, okay? So um, yeah, 41% here. So matching 41% with some modifications, okay? Um, and that's because of the way that, um, yeah, basically the, the file format um, and the way that uh, PNG compression works uh, or the PNG compression in GIMP works, okay? Uh, PNG1 uh, matches PNG4 55%, okay? So let's take a look at that. So PNG1 matches PNG4 55%. Now, why is that? Okay, well, basically the same reason. Instead of having it blurry in all of this space, we've only modified actually a very small portion um, of the data. So this is a relatively small portion. The other one, uh, let me open up two again. We can see that uh, this, the area that was modified is basically, let's say, this big, if you can see that, it's this big, um, where the area in PNG4 is much, much smaller. So even though that it's smaller, it still only matches 55%. Again, because of the type of compression that's done, we're still losing some information there. Okay, so those are the matches for uh, PNG4 and PNG1. Um, now, you might notice something on here, PNG3, okay? We matched PNG2 and we matched PNG4, so 41%, 55% because of the, the amount of data that was actually changed in the original image. Um, but what we don't see on here is PNG3. Now, let's look at PNG3, okay? So this is um, basically just added uh, this box. So why doesn't this match? Well, it doesn't match because whenever I added this box in GIMP, um, I actually added a new layer to the image, okay? So whenever I added a new layer to the image, it essentially changed all of the data, okay? So um, by adding a new layer over it, I've changed all of the data because I've added basically a, a new layer on top of the entire image. That's changing all of the data underneath whenever it finally gets uh, rendered, basically. So uh, PNG3 doesn't match, even though it's just there, because of the way that I added the layer. Um, on these other ones, I just modified the layer directly. I did not add another layer on top, okay? So that's an important, um, I guess, important to think about. Uh, the way um, the way the editing makes a huge difference uh, in whether you're going to get any type of match or not. Really, if you're trying to do um, uh, if you're trying to compare two images, you should be using feature extraction and not uh, binary matching. But I'm just showing you uh, basically that it is possible. But really, some things you have to watch out for. Uh, let's see, PNG two, PNG two matches okay. PNG three matches 100%. Uh, PNG4 and PNG1, just like we saw before, 55%. PNG4 and PNG2, 40%, um, just like we saw before. Uh, and then uh, PNG5 with no compression matches PNG5 with no compression. Uh, PNG6 with no compression matches PNG6 with no compression. Um, yeah, and they don't uh, they don't match each other either. Um, that's basically just changing the compression levels around. Now, if we go back and do dash A, we can see all of the ones that didn't match as well. Um, PNG five, no compression. Yeah, so um, everything else basically matches zero, so it's automatically filtered out. Now. Um, we can also use SSD to filter out only like matches that are above uh, 
let's say 50% or 60%, but the problem here is that um, PNG2 and PNG4 actually matched. They are, they are similar because they're derived from the same image, um, but they only matched 40%, and there's a lot of different reasons for that low matching. Um, but this is actually a match. So choosing, uh, be very, my point is be very careful about how you um, choose to filter. If you filter based on, for example, um, I'm going to take everything that's 50% 50, 50 or above match. Well, uh, that might not be very good depending on what types of files you're looking at. Um, working with some data types, especially text, you usually want a higher match than before. Um, uh, for example, like 80%, 90%, something like that. Um, but really, you have to understand your data set and what you're trying to match before you can figure out uh, where to set your threshold. So just be aware of that. Don't just arbitrarily pick you know, 60 and above because you would have missed these two. But if you pick anything you know, uh, lower than 50, you might get a lot of false positives. So um, just be aware that um, you really need to understand the data that you're trying to match here. Okay. So again, like I said, um, uh, whenever we're matching images, you should be using feature extraction, not, not necessarily binary extraction, but just know the data types. Um, if you are looking for data types that you know can match at a binary level, okay, then no problem. But um, for images or video, you really should be doing feature extraction and, and um, similarity matching over the features. Um, right, so let's see. Um, the only other thing I have to show is uh, if we go back to the text. Oops. Ugh. If we go back to the text, now we already know that 26 and uh, 26 mod are related. We found that out uh, by using um, uh, SSD, but I want to know exactly what was different or what was different in the uh, in the files. So I can use diff diff in Linux, um, and then just say 26 and 26 mod, and this will tell me exactly the lines that were different. So here. Um, it said inappropriate, the original, uh, 26 was the original, 26 mod is the modified. So the original goes first then. Um, inappropriate materials such as this are opened. Okay, well, in the new one, we have inappropriate cookies such as this are opened, right? So using diff is a good way to see exactly what line was changed once you find out that two files are similar. Um, now we could have done the same thing. Um, yeah, okay, anyway, that's just to show you how to pull out um, or how to uh, find what was changed in two different files. Okay, so that's it today for um, fuzzy hashing and SSDeep. Thank you very much. If you like this video, please subscribe for more.